Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I don't think I've done a fountain pen review on this channel that has generated as many views as my review of this new model, Jinhao X159. As of right now, this review has generated over 21,000 views, minus the 18 people who hated the video without watching it. <laughs> I'm not surprised generated by the interest in this pen. It's almost identical in size and shape to the Mont Blanc 149. It has a large number eight size nib for less than a tenth the price of a Mont Blanc 149. People who have always wanted to at least try a Mont Blanc 149 size pen to see if they like it only have to shell out a few bucks to get one instead of the 700 to 800 dollars you'd have to shell out for the real thing. And if the pen feels comfortable, holds ink, and writes a nice line, why not try one? Came to this little place, waiter says, try this, you'll like it. What's this? Try it, you'll like it. But what is, try it, you'll like it. So I tried it. Thought I was gonna die. And that's what I found with this one that I reviewed a couple of months ago. Jinhao is very astute as a company and watching and listening very carefully to sales and user feedback about its pen models. They responded to this outpouring of interest in the new X159 by not only coming out with three new colorways with the pen in gold trim, blue, maroon, and black, but they've also made some refinements in the model itself. And I've got this updated X159 in this lovely deep maroon with gold trim. Let's see what the updates are right now. It's Chinese package day, the mail it came today. It's Chinese package day, I'll get a pen today. And let's find out what pen Doug gets today. I have no idea. Aha! I had no tracking on this whatsoever. But this is my second Jinhao X159. Let's see. There we go. Yes, and it comes in this lovely burgundy color. They call it red, but it's burgundy. Isn't that nice? With gold hardware. I love it. Very light, just like the first one in black. The color adds no weight to it. And that nib is two-tone. That's lovely. I'm very pleased with this already. These X159s have turned out to be incredibly popular. So I think I already know what ink I'm going to put in this pen. I'll clean it out and I will do an extra Jinhao X159 fountain pen review. Something to look forward to. As I mentioned in the introduction, I've already reviewed this model pen and compared it to a Mont Blanc 149. You can see that video by clicking right up here. So I won't go into the same amount of detail, but I will look at the parts and features of the pen, show some measurements again, and do a writing sample. After the writing sample, I'll give you my two cents worth on the updated X159. But first, let's look at what changed between the first X159 and this updated version. The original was only available with black and chrome hardware and a chrome fine nib. Now there are three new finish options, all with gold trim, maroon, black, and dark blue. And the nib is now in a two-tone gold and chrome, fine, and available in extra fine as well, number eight size nib. And the last update, at least the last change I can find, is a subtle one, but one that shows that Jinhao is listening. Every review I've seen of the X159 has commented on how many turns it takes to uncap the pen. Three turns to uncap a pen, especially one as large as this, is a real functional flaw in the design. And Jinhao listened, because now it only takes one, two, two and a bit full rotations to uncap the pen. And since it's obvious that Jinhao is watching these YouTube reviews and listening to feedback, listen up Jinhao, we want an X159 piston filler and a number eight size medium nib. Thank you for listening. Incidentally, Majon has already beaten Jinhao to the punch by releasing their new model P136, which looks to be another Mont Blanc 149 knockoff 
but this one is actually a piston filler. I've ordered the P136 and expect it any day now. The one thing I'm curious about is the size of the nib. From the photos, it looks like a number six size regular nib. That leaves the door open for Jin Hao to come out with a real Mont Blanc 149 killer, the X159 piston filler, with this number eight size nib. In my original review, I shied away from attempting to remove this nib, as the number eight Jin Hao nib isn't something that can be easily replaced since they're so new. But then I saw other brave souls unscrew their nib assemblies. Thanks, Doodlebud. So I did as well. And it's nice to see the usual solid Jin Hao construction of that nib collar with the Jin Hao stamp on it. And there's an O-ring right there as well. This makes it much easier to clean the pen and you can swap these nib units between pens. Oh yeah, hey Jin Hao, we want to buy these nib units separately as well. Thanks for listening. And the new version has the same Jin Hao converter with the reinforced metal nipple and the O-ring at the bottom of the section. Doodlebud says that uh, keeps that from cracking right there as you stop turning when you feel it uh, slow down against that silicone O-ring. But I also think it has to do with not allowing the barrel to unscrew while you're using it as it gives it that little bit of extra friction. I've been writing steadily with this pen since it arrived. It's comfortable both posted and unposted. The pen is exactly the same dimensions as the Mont Blanc 149, both posted and unposted, with the Jin Hao's cap weighing about two grams less than the Mont Blanc. So the cap doesn't unbalance that pen at all or make it that much heavier. I bought this pen on eBay for $9.98, but it has since dropped slightly in price. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Jin Hao X159. I'm going to call it updated. And it has a number eight size. fine steel nib. Let's check the wetness. It's nicely wet, but it wasn't like that when I first got it. I performed the ink acquiring mines, a seven strokes to inky happiness technique on the nib. This is what you do. You take your pen and you press it into the page gently, gently folks, so that it spreads those tines. I'll do it like this so you can see it. See those tines just slightly spread out. And you do that seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Why seven, you might ask, because seven is a nice number. And because that Chinese steel is so stiff, it has a memory when you spread it out. So there is a danger of actually springing that nib if you're not careful, but it does have the advantage of making the pen nicely wet. And the nib is very smooth. Very smooth for a fine nib. A little bit of feedback, but silky smooth on the page. As for line variation, as you could expect, as I just said, you can squeeze a little bit out of it, but it is not flex at all. In fact, it's relatively stiff, typical for a Chinese steel nib. And the line this pen makes is 0 0.4 millimeters, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese 
fine nib and for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It actually works very nicely. A little bit scratchier and a lot drier, but very, very thin. And some quick writing. It has no difficulty at all, but this is how it wrote when I wrote quickly with it right out of the box before I did the seven strokes to inky happiness. You can see these skips right here was that feed not keeping up well, with the quickness of the nib. So that uh, opening up of the nib really worked for the ink flow as well. And before I get to my likes and dislikes, I'd like to post something about King Charles III here. I've used a quote from him when he was Prince Charles. The latest hubbub about King Charles III in the last week or so about be him being pissed off about fountain pens and flying off the handle and all that. Here is a really interesting post that I just read and it sort of sums up my feeling about all this. Now this is an article I read on news.com.au uh, which is an Australian website. Let me quote. Despite living in the age of the overshare, grief remains the last pillar of things we don't talk about. People die, flowers are sent, and then the expectation is that you move on. We don't express how we feel, or heaven forbid, talk about the person who died, lest we make everyone else feel uncomfortable. But guess what? Grief just doesn't go away because you ignore it. It sits with you forever, and you grow a new body around it. You learn to live with it, and the weight of it doesn't drown you anymore, but it's still there. It's always there. Now, I'm not a royalist in any way. I haven't even watched The Crown, but I do know grief, and I keep thinking how hard it would be to move through that in public. Yes, he's a king, but he's also a person who just lost his mother, and I think that has been forgotten here. It's about grief. Hello, the man's a human being. He lost his mother. If you've ever lost a parent, you'll understand how grief works, and I can imagine what it would be like if you had to bottle it up. He was into all kinds of royal events immediately after his mother passed away. Never probably got a moment to actually grieve. If you've ever experienced grief, you know what it's like that small things will set you off. So let's give the man a little bit of slack here. Uh, for those of you that think he doesn't know how to work a fountain pen, he is 73. He grew up in England in the 50s and the 60s and probably used a fountain pen and does use a fountain pen most of his adult life. He pulled a Mont Blanc solitaire out of his pocket and dipped it into some document ink. Yes, he dipped a fountain pen because if you had a Mont Blanc, you wouldn't want to fill it up with document ink either. And I'm sure he's a billionaire, so he can probably buy 10, 15 of these things. But don't you think he has a pen that he loves and he has it in his jacket pocket ready to use? And if you tried to sign a document that's going to be permanent, for hundreds of years with your signature, Charles III, the first time maybe he signed as king, wouldn't you want the ink wells and, and a box of Pilot V pens to be outside of your arm's length and not put in front of your document so that you might have an inky accident? I think all those things are reasonable. So let's just back up and give the man some space. Rant off. And after all that hullabaloo, I forgot to mention what the ink was in the pen. The ink is diamine oxblood, which I think is a perfect match for this maroon colored and gold pen. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I liked the first version of this pen very much, but I like this one even more. First, because it's in a color that I find more attractive than the black and chrome. 
Call me old fashioned. Okay, I'm old fashioned. Uh, I can see her now. White haired, lavender, and old lace. Can't you see her, Bruce? Yes, yes, I can. She's old, isn't she? But I find the black and chrome combination just plain boring. Black and gold at least has some class to it, but I know that's out of fashion these days. I don't care. I've always looked fondly on the maroon and gold combination as well. Very warm looking. The second reason is because of the reduction of one full turn in uncapping the pen. It's easier, yes, but it also shows how responsive Jin Hao is to customer preferences and feedback. And thanks, Jin Hao, for not making the nib all gold, but making it a two-tone here, gold and rhodium. Again, I think that gives the pen a little bit of class. So is this a Mont Blanc 149 for a tenth the price? To quote my colleague Doodlebud, hell no. But for 14 bucks, you're getting a well-made pen with a large dip that is well-balanced and a very smooth writer. I don't know where else you can find a number eight size steel nib on any pen for this price. And if Jin Hao comes out with a number eight nib in medium, I'll be all over it like a on a Mars bar. How do we get in? Hello, mommy. Mommy, can I have some chocolate? I want some Austin? Mars bars. Please smack my bottom, Austin. mommy. Sorry, love. <laughs> I got stuck in your dirty pillows. Mm. And there you have it. A real possibility for the top 10 pens of 2022. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you... for watching... And that's all she wrote. this.